Hello and welcome to today's screencast which is going to be on the sliding filament theory. So the, the sliding filament theory just explains how muscles contract. So we've actually gone through the nervous stimulation of a motor unit and if we just quickly going to go over that, in front of you right now is a motor unit. The motor unit is made up of a motor neuron and the muscle fibres it innervates. So when we have an action potential that runs down the axon of a motor neuron, when it gets to the muscle fibre we have a muscular contraction. Obviously, we know that in a bit more detail, but that's just a really quick overflow. So now we know about an action potential being sent to the muscle fiber, and we, we know it contracts. The sliding filament theory actually explains how that contraction takes place. Today's screencast, we're just going to go through the basics, or more to do with just the terminology of some of the things we need to know the regards to the sliding filament theory. So here are your Cornell notes. These are the key kind of topics we need to be aware of. We need to know what a myofibril is, sarcomere, what myosin and axin are. These are really important. What's the H, what is the H zone, Z line, A band, I band. These here, really, we just need to be able to identify them on a picture or on a um, diagram. For example, this may be an exam question. Figure 1 shows a sarcomere at rest. Here's a sarcomere. Identify A and B shown in figure 1. So we need to be able to identify A and B. So by the end of the screencast, we're going to be able to label this with H zone, Z line, A band, I band, actin, myosin. That's going to be the main aim. So you are going to be drawing something similar to this during these Cornell notes. Okay, so hopefully you've got your titles of what we need to know. We're going to go through them. Now, what is important is we quickly go back to the anatomy of a muscle, okay? So, if we remember quickly, we have got the whole muscle, a sheath that's kind of connected around the whole muscle to keep it all in place is known as the epimyceum, and then these bundles here are known as fascicles, and here's one pulled out, so this is the fascicle. Now, remember, a fascicle holds muscle fibres all together. This is a fascicle zoomed in, and then around the fascicle, we've got perimyceum which connective tissue around the, around the um, fascicle. So now we've got a muscle fibre pulled out of the fascicle here, and this is a muscle fibre. Now, all these little dots within the muscle fibre, these are myofibrils. Now, myofibrils are thin muscle fibres. Okay, so with your corner notes, you said what's a myofibril? You need to have a myofibril is a thin muscle fibre. This is where the magic happens. This is where we get a muscular contraction and it's due to something called the sarcomere that we have within our muscle and um, within our myofibrils. So what we should have down is myofibril. So muscles are comprised of thin muscle fibres known as myofibrils. Myofibrils are thin muscle fibres. These things here, these are really thin muscle fibrils. Now muscle, fib um, muscle fibres being myofibril, sorry. Each myofibril contains a sarcomere. Now a sarcomere, one of your other corner notes, is the smallest contractile unit of a skeletal muscle. And I'm going to show you a sarcomere in a minute. You've actually already seen one with regards to that quiz, um, that exam question. So a sarcomere is the smallest contractile unit of a skeletal muscle. This is what contracts and it contracts because the sarcomere holds within it actin and myosin or myosin and actin. Okay, so that is something we need to be aware of. That myosin is spelt incorrectly. It's M Y O S I N, myosin. So please correct that. Apologies on the screencast there. So we're going to move on, and I'm going to show you another example of the anatomy of a muscle fibre. You don't need to know all these terms, that's why they're blurry. You don't need to know them. Big old muscle, fascicles, pull a fascicle out. Within the fascicle, it holds bundles of muscle fibres together, pull out a muscle fibre. Then we have these little strands within the muscle fibre known as myofibril. Myofibril are thin muscle fibres and they contain sarcomeres. Now you can't tell, but these, this dark area here, this dark area here, there's a thin line here. These are sarcomeres. Sarcomeres run the length of the muscle or the myofibril. And I'm going to show you it now in, in like better detail. So this here is one sarcomere. Now, a sarcomere is the smallest unit of skeletal contraction, skeletal muscle where contraction takes place, okay? Or the smallest contractile unit of a skeletal muscle. 
they run the length of a myofibril. So to the left here, this here is the start of another sarcomere, and it would finish here. Then you have another, and so on and so on. So these sarcomeres run the length of a myofibril. So the smallest contractile unit of skeletal muscle. That is what really important with regards to a sarcomere. That is what we need to know. It's the smallest contractile unit of a skeletal muscle. So we have a skeletal contraction. This here is what actually contracts. This is what kind of shortens in the tension for a concentric muscular contraction, and that's what allows us to have movement. Okay, so we need to know about myosin and actin. Myosin are thick filaments. So these green things highlighted here, which are also here, but I've just highlighted them green here, these are myosin strands. Myosin are thick filaments. These aquacolor ones highlighted, these are actin filaments. Actin are thin filaments. Myosin thick filaments, actin thin. I think actin, tin, thin. Oh, it rhymes a bit, it's got a T in. Actin thin filaments. So myosin and actin, myosin are thick filaments, actin are thin filaments. During muscular contraction, myosin filaments attach to actin filaments, which forms something called a cross bridge, and this allows muscular contraction to occur. So on this kind of diagram here, you can see these little heads here on the myosin. These are myosin heads, these are. These attach to the actin and act like a ratchet and pull on the actin. Okay, and similarly, here's exactly the same. You've got these little heads here in the myosin. These stretch out, attach the actin, and then as a ratchet mechanism, they pull on the actin, which causes a muscular contraction. So myosin and actin are essential for muscular contraction. If the myosin heads do not attach to the actin filaments and act as a ratchet system and pull on them, we do not get a muscular contraction. So now we're going to go through the sarcomere and being able to label a sarcomere in terms of the H zone, the Z line, the A band, the I band, and so on. Okay. Firstly, this is just a quick show of this is myosin here. These three heads are myosin, these are myosin here. This is actin. Right now, as you can see in this picture at the top, they're not touching. This is a relaxed muscle. When we need a contraction, the myosin attaches to the actin pulls on it. This was happening all three miles in here, they would all attach to the actin and they would pull to create a contraction. So, being able to label the sarcomere. From this Z line to this Z line, in the middle of it, in between, this is the sarcomere. This is one sarcomere. If you actually look on the other side of this Z line, there's these as well. This will just continue on to the next sarcomere. And similarly, to so the left hand side, this would continue on to the next sarcomere. Remember, a sarcomere runs the length of a myofibril. If we start in with the Z line, this is the area at each end of the separate sarcomeres, and this is where the actin filaments attach. So we've got a Z line. Now, in that picture I showed you at the start of the exam, it actually looked like Z, so it's clear that it's a Z line. The Z line, actin attaches to the Z line. And essentially, it's the kind of like the Z line is the end of each separate sarcomere. And then above the Z line, we've got the I band. Now, if you look, the I band, it's kind of like it's next to or adjacent to this A band. So the I band is next to the A band, and it only has actin filaments in it. If you drew a line all the way down, from that eye band to this eye band here, it only contains actin filaments in. So that's the eye band, and it's the same on this side. Eye band, all the way down, only has um, actin filaments in there, and it's adjacent to the A band. If we're going to talk about the A band, the A band is the active area where contraction actually takes place between the actin and the myosin. That's all you need to know here. So the A band, this is where myosin heads can actually touch the actin, pull on it, pull on it, this is the place, A band is where the contraction takes place. The H zone here, if we draw a line down there and a line down there, you can see that the H zone only contains myosin heads or like thick filaments. So the H zone is in the middle of the A band and it only has 
myosin um, in it. So this is a table, we've got the Z-line. Z-line the area at the end of separate sarcomeres where the actin filaments attach. During muscular contraction, these lines move closer together. And I'm going to show you a picture that kind of illustrates that in a minute. The A band, this is the area where the myosin is. The active area where contraction takes place between the actin and myosin. H zone, the center of the A band. This is the area within the A band where there is myosin only. Finally, the I band, this is the area containing actin only. This short and strong contraction. As I said, it, it would be really good if you know each one of these and you know actually what they do. However, in an exam, you're probably only going to get an asked a question in terms of labelling this when it comes to the line and the band and the zone and the band, etc. When it comes to the sliding filament theory itself, you probably only really need to mention actin and myosin and then the Z lines, really. And I'm going to go on about that in lesson. However, it's really, really important that you can actually label this. I want you to draw this. It doesn't have to be fantastically drawn, okay? But I want you to have this drawn and have it labelled myosin filaments actin filaments, Z line, I band, A band, I band, H zone. I really need that drawn, okay. So hopefully you've got sufficient notes on this. Your notes in terms of your questions will be, I want you to be able to label this. If you could do fill in the blanks with Z, A, H and I bands, that would be fantastic. Um, but the main thing I want is, you know what a myofibril is, you know what a sarcomere is, you know the actin and myosin is where the contraction takes place because myosin heads attach to actin which causes cross bridges which makes them contract and you need to be able to label this. If you want to have a go at the exam question, before I do that I'll actually just show you sorry with um, regards to muscular contraction. This is a sarcomere that is relaxed. When the myosin heads attach to the actin and pull on it, the Z lines come closer together and that is a contracted muscle there. So that's a relaxed muscle or a relaxed sarcomere, this is a contracted sarcomere, and as you can see, the Z lines have come closer together. Now, see if you can quickly answer that question. I actually think that's a nice, easy question for now, after just doing that screencast. So, what is this A band here? Or what is this A, sorry, I should say? And then what is this B here? So what, what's this one here? Okay, so please make sure you have good notes on that. You may want to watch this more than once, absolutely fine. And please be prepared for lesson. Thank you.